Welcome to our worship service inside, outside, and online at Mount Zion Lutheran Church in Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Debbie. So glad you could be with us this morning. Let's begin our worship together with confession and forgiveness. <coughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God <coughs> and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness. Follow the way of the Spirit and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to, to new life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Malachi chapter 4. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be will be stubborn. The day that comes shall bring them up, says the Lord of hosts, so it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. We'll read Psalm 98 responsibly. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O oh Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. Remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout the joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, you rejoice and sin. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With the trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout out the joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills bring out the joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second reading is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how we ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have a right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some
some of you were living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. I forgot to mention that our uh, music, musical liturgy this morning will be spoken. If you'll join me in the gospel, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The gospel this morning is from Luke, the 21st chapter, verses 5 through 19. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another and all will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be and what will be the sign that is about to take place? And he said, beware that you are not led astray for many will come in my name and say, I am he and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues, and there'll be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Here ends the Gospel reading. Once again, we had a great time babysitting our almost two-year-old granddaughter, Maddie and Charlotte, while James and Becca traveled to Jan's home away from home, the Florida Keys. When I picked them up from the airport, of course, they asked me, how things go? And I said, great. Maddie slept through the night, she ate well for us, and we had a lot of fun playing with her. However, I said to them, you know, it's only been five weeks since we were here last, and Mike and I both noticed that she's talking a lot more, but we just don't understand what she's saying. <laughs> James and Becca laughed and said, you know, we've decoded much of what Maddie is saying, but at times we're also at a loss what she's talking about. You know that too, Kyle? <laughs> That kind of sums up, believe it or not, our gospel lesson for this morning. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. They hear his words, warning them about things that are gloomy and dreadful, but they don't really fully understand his predictions. Don't get used to the beauty and size of that temple. It's all coming down. False messiahs will try to lead you astray. There's going to be wars and insurrections, and nations will rise against nations. There'll be earthquakes, famines, and plagues. Oh my. You'll be arrested and persecuted, even betrayed by friends and relatives. You will be hated by all because of my name. And some of you will be put to death. Of course, I wasn't there, but I think one of the biggest surprises to the people who were listening to Jesus was that their temple, the center of Jewish worship, life, and their identity was going to be destroyed. This is beyond their comprehension. And 
if you look at history, Herod the Great began refurbishing this second temple, because there was another one that was destroyed, the second temple in 20 BC, and he did, and it happened over 80 years. He wasn't there the whole time, but he's the one that began it. And the temple size was doubled from 17 to 36 acres, and it was to be a showcase for Herod the Great and his legacy. And that meant he spared no expense. It's estimated that some 18,000 workers were hired to build it with mammoth stones weighing tons plus lots of marble. The foundation walls alone were 40 feet high. This architectural marble, it's going to come down. To further our understanding, it helps to place this writing in its proper context. Luke wrote this gospel mainly to a Gentile Christian community in the late 80s. Jesus died around the 30s. This is written about the 80s. And therefore, Luke wrote his gospel after the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. And that means Luke lived through the bloody and brutal Jewish wars that began in 66 AD, and therefore the Roman occupation of Jerusalem at that time, and all of it with the destruction of this second temple in 70 AD. Only now what is left is the Western Wall. Some people call it the Wailing Wall. And that remains as a sacred site for Jews today. In this Gospel lesson, Luke proclaims Jesus was right. And if Jesus was right about the temple being destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, Luke is telling his audience that Jesus is right about all those other things he predicted. And what do we know today? Well, even though Christianity is the, one of the world's major religions with over 2 billion followers, people are still persecuted for their Christian beliefs, even in the United States. Now, this persecution can take many forms, not all persecution leads to death. Sometimes in sharing our faith, it can lead to being ostracized or marginalized. I know personally, I felt alienated when I shared my news with my family and coworkers about attending seminary. You're gonna do what at age 45 with two young children and a successful career, you're going to give that up? Will that be good for the family? Even my pastor said, well, this may not be the right time. They didn't understand my calling. I barely understood it myself. Even volunteering in the church can strain close relationships with family and friends. You're spending what time doing what? And even some strain within the congregation. If and when we experience, well, I'll just categorize it as mistreatment, because we're following the ways of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have only to remember that Jesus predicted it would happen. And this is where we need to lean in close and pay attention to one word Jesus says in the very last verse of this lesson. And that word is endure. Endurance is what is needed as we go through any difficult times that try our faith and tempt us to give up. Whenever and however we are challenged along the way, we can draw strength from our relationship with our Lord and endure without fear. 
You see, Jesus is concerned about more than uh, a temple being destroyed or our church buildings. Although the temple was indeed destroyed by the Romans, neither Judaism nor Christianity were destroyed. Both religions have continued to grow and evolve over the centuries in new geographical locations, in new nations, and among people of many ethnicities and races. Though Christianity seems to be declining in some denominations, through the work of the Holy Spirit, it will continue to live and grow in new forms and in new places. In addition, it's my personal experience that when I'm going through difficult times, the dear Lord is beginning something new for me. And it's not just for pastors. Think of it for yourself, because the same is true. The dear Lord is promising something greater. It's not a good feeling to be pushed in a different direction. And we may not fully understand why he is leading us. But no matter what the circumstances may be, we need to endure and trust in where we're being led. I think this is the point where I thought about Kyle's song. All we need is our Lord to be in his presence and some quiet. To listen. That is, our task is to ask for discernment about what God wants us to do, and then follow his guidance, and with the work of the Holy Spirit, to get it done. In other words, Jesus is encouraging all of his followers, I have your back in this world. It's going to turn out okay. I will lead you. And I'll even make it an opportunity for you to testify to others how you got through that ordeal. Everything and everyone is in God's hands and will be delivered from anything that threatens us that is temporary in this world. And by his mercy, we'll be given eternal life. Although it seems like, especially with the elections last week and all the hurricanes, uh, etc., it seems like the religious and political and natural worlds are in a state of chaos. The hardships and the moments of suffering are but opportunities to testify to the power and the ultimate triumph by Christ. With our eyes turned heavenward, but our feet firmly set on this earth, we're to wait with patience and hope about what he has in store for us next. As Christians, we will continue to ask and pray about the future? Of course we will. We are only human. And will we understand everything Jesus is saying to us? Probably not. But given a choice of how we continue in our faith journey, it is far better for us to leave our fears behind and place our future in trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord. As the Bible unfolds in front of us, especially reading at home and here in church, and our faith journey endures, the one constant is our Lord's unfailing love for us and his never-ending presence beside us. Amen. Next, uh, we will sing How Great Thou Art. The music is on page five, and we'll sing all four verses. Kyle, do we need to put a microphone on you? Oh, you got one? Okay, okay. Oh, thank you, Ray. Sure. I will say that uh, the verse that I pull up might not be in the same order as the ones you have. Um, so, is it possible to get a 
Let us now confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in his glory. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue our service now with the prayers of the people. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God as the northern hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, Receive our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially in those we now name aloud for in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive your prayer. United God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, this is the time to find your Holy Communion kits. If you got, forgot to pick them up on the way in, they're on the back table. They're outside with the worship team in their basket. And we'll continue with the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also to you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the house of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. At this time, if you are able, please lift your communion kit of wafer and grape juice for a blessing. <coughs> 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we ask that you bless and enter into these gifts of bread and juice so that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. All glory and honor is yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us and grant us peace. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. You can consume your communion now during this song of meditation that Kyle will play or at home.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you to endure and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Question for Kyle. Are you going to sing um, Great is Thy Faithfulness or something else? Okay. Take it away. Thanks be to God.